I have here the Department of Education Manual of Style or commonly known as the DMOST. Once again, I am Dr. Jennifer M. Oestar, Education Program Specialist 2 for School Management Monitoring and Evaluation of DepEd Lucena City. To begin with, let us have the legal basis or DepEd Order Number 30 Series of 2009. Sanya ba ito nakaangkla or based? The Department of Education shall adopt the American English and it shall use the Chicago Manual of Style or CMOS as its official reference. So, nakaangkla po or lifted ang ating uh, demos sa CMOS, which is the Chicago Manual of Style. So, if you are familiar with Kate Torabian, who was the pioneer of the Chicago Manual of Style, you will also be familiar with some of the typeface being used in Depth Ed Manual of Style. In my discussion, I will be covering first uh, Rules 1 to 96, and I will be dividing my talk into parts. So part one will be for abbreviations and acronyms. Part two will be capitalization. Part three, currencies and exchange rates. Part four, dates, formatting, as well as the language usage. Una po muna, ang uh, Deped Manual of Style, how do we abbreviate in DepEd or in Chicago Manual of Style or even uh, specifically nga in DepEd Manual of Style? Una po, um, I will be giving you uh, questions. This is my way of discussing. I give thought-provoking questions first and I give explanations after we have that uh, questioning strategy. Is DepEd an abbreviation? You are given five seconds to do so, to decide. How about SBM? Is this an abbreviation to? Let's give the definition of abbreviation. An abbreviation is from Latin brevis, meaning short, is a shortened form of word or phrase by any method. Where, uh, whereas an acronym is a word or name formed from the initial components of the longer name or phrase, usually using individual initial letters. So that's the difference between the two. So the answer to our question, is DEPID an abbreviation following the definition? The answer is yes, because it is the shortened form of the word or phrase. And we also have this, how about SBM? The answer is no, because SBM is an acronym formed from the initial components of a longer name or phrase. SBM stands for School-Based Management. Let's have the next question. The Department of Education, or DepEd, shall continue to provide school-based management grants to public schools. Does the sentence provide appropriate abbreviation in acronym? Let's see. If an abbreviation or acronym appears more than once in a document, spell it out first on its first mention. It could be in a form of documents, issuances, and press releases. Enclose the abbreviation and acronym in parentheses after the full form or spelled out term and then use the abbreviation or acronym in succeeding paragraphs. What will be your answer? The answer is yes. If a term is mentioned only once, use the spelled out form. So, ibig sabihin po, sa unang banggit ng ating mga acronyms and abbreviation, you have to spell out all of those or kung ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng ating pinaikli or yung ating dinaglat. In this case, the Department of Education is spelled out first 
and school-based management is also spelled out first. It means the usage is correct. Additional explanation. The Department of Education, DEPID, shall continue to provide school-based management grants to public schools to augment the school funds, DEPED. On the second citation, it's already DEPED na. Through the School Effectiveness Division, shall manage the allocation of SBM grants based on the SBM guidelines on availment, release, utilization, and liquidation. So, ang ipig sabihin po, we do no longer spell out the acronyms and the abbreviation on the second mention, as you can see on the second sentence. To continue, paano naman kung meron tayong abbreviations and names of organization? What shall we do? Answer this question first. Is it a fuck or block? Blocked. When the full name or full form or spelled out term is less known than its abbreviation, use the acronym or abbreviation of the organization. Parang hindi masyadong familiar yung ating spelled out term. At mas kilala yung ating acronym and abbreviation. So what shall we do? The answer is... Fact. Bakit po? So there would be instances na mas kilala yung SEMIO, di ba? Uh, we are familiar with SEMIO. It's an organization. Southeast Asian Ministries of Education Organization. I'm not too familiar with it. ASEAN. Mas kilala ang ASEAN. Association of Southeast Asian Nation. UN, di ba? Mas familiar ang UN instead of United Nations. Then we also have UNICEF, UNESCO. So we can use this uh, familiar terms on its first mention if the case would be mas familiar tayo kesa dun sa full version. Okay? So following that rulings and the spellings or should we say, the examples given. Paano naman uh, ang pag-abbreviate sa pangalan ng mga organization? What do you call to this part of a manual, handout, or reference? ADB stands for Asian Development Bank, ADF, Asian Development Fund, GDP, Gross Domestic Product. LCR, Ordinary Capital Resources, and PRC, People's Republic of China. Okay, so if we have part of a manual, as you can see, marami tayong manuals sa Department of Education. Marami tayong mga localized policies and documents na namimension yung ating mga abbreviations. We must provide list of abbreviations dun sa ating reference or even uh, if I'm not mistaken, may bibliography section tayo or glossary section. We could have that as pwede rin sa appendices yung mga list of abbreviations para we have a guide if this familiar terms being mentioned in the part of the manual I acronyms na or yung mga uh, abbreviation na, we could check doon sa list of abbreviations, ah, ito pala ang ibig sabihin niya, even we're too familiar with yung maikling version. So, we could refer to the list of abbreviation for added information. Next. Paano naman uh, on the cases of articles and abbreviation. How will you pronounce an abbreviation with an article? Letter A, A-N, how to pronounce this one? F-A-O, publication, or file publication? Letter B, A-N, food and agriculture, organization, publication. Paano po ito? If the acronym is read as a word, avoid using 
an article before it. If the abbreviation or acronym is read as a series of letters, use an article before it. Paano babasahin ang FAO? Is it FAO, brother? FAO publication or FAO publication? Tingnan natin on succeeding examples. DepEd has issued new instructions for implementation. Bakit hindi tayo gumamit ng article dun sa DepEd? Dahil po, it is read as a word. Hindi naman natin siya bin binasa bilang series of letters. Hindi natin sinabi na D-E-P-E-D. -E so in that case, the D-E-P-E-D -E has issue, issued. So therefore, following the rule, DepEd lang siya walang acronym dahil siya ay read as a word as I reiterate. Additionally, NEDA is an agency that plays a big role in disaster risk reduction. Wala po ulit siyang article kasi read as a word siya. We will hold our convention at Simio Inotech. Wala ulit dahil read as a word. Kindly note the next example. The DSWD has been building its capacities in responding to disasters. The safety and security of school children during disasters is one of the reasons why we have the SDRRMC. What have you noticed? We use the article the because it is read as a series of letters. So, yun po yung one of the common errors ng ating mga guro and even yung mga gumagawa ng documents in DepEd because they are not familiar with these rulings. So, ang sagot po natin, ginamita natin siya ng article and FAO publication. So, yun pala ang basa doon. Okay? Paano naman po itong a food and agriculture organization publication? So, sa case naman ito, magdadagdag ulit ako ng karagdagang pagpapaliwanag. Bakit po uh, parehas siyang ginamita ng article? Diba, uh, balikan natin yung ating English basic uh, rulings on the use of articles. Kailan ba ginagamit ang A? Kailan ba ginagamit ang A? Or the, the N? Sa case po nito, FAO publication. F. E. F. Sound. E. E. F. Ibig sabihin po, na una ang vowel sound na E dun sa F. Kaya po siya ay gumamit ng an bilang ating article. Ito naman sa isa, food. F sound, o binabalik ako yung linguistics uh, lecture ko or discussion ko with my BSN students. So, F sound. Uh, F sound. Kaya siya ay A. Dahil hindi naman po siya vowel sound, kundi ang F sound ay consonant. So, that made the difference po. And let's continue. How about this case? Capitalization of abbreviations and acronyms. Which of the following is appropriately used? Letter A, para, for paragraph. Letter B, COP, community of practice. C, AM, for anti-meridian. D, Dep Ed, for department of education. And E, DOJ, for department of justice. Pwede rin po kayo magsagot sa chat box or sa comment box if you want to participate on our activity or our questioning today. Ano po kaya dyan ang tama? Write acronyms and capital letters. Which one is correct? Write abbreviations and initial uppercase and lowercase as relevant. And either if they're or in their spelled out forms, Capitalize only the first letter of proper names. 
in this case, para is correct following rule number two. COP or community of practice is also correct following rule number two as well. Dep ed is also correct following Okay, is it rule number two as well? And DOJ is correct following uh, rule number two. Or should we say rule number one? Acronyms in capital letters. Why AM is not correct or incorrect? Because I will be explaining this also later when it comes to declaring time and period of the day. Anti-meridian should be written as small letter A, period, small letter M, period. Another common mistake of uh, writers, diba? Because we always tend to put capitalize M, uh, A and M to AM as well as PM. But if we follow the manual of style, it should be small A, period, small M, period i guess you are uh, activating your prior knowledge or if not so you are learning a lot from these examples but we have some exemptions to the rule you have the meaning of the following words oh are you familiar with this let's challenge ourselves you can use the chat box of course or the comment box what's the meaning of the following facts dvd PDF, URL, HTML, CD room, C. Exemptions to the rule, abbreviations that should not be spelled out. Why? Some abbreviations are better known than the words they stand for and do not have to be explained in the text or added to the abbreviations list. So may mga uh, abbreviation pala and acronyms na hindi na natin kailangang is spelled out even on the first mention because as what I'm telling a while ago, mas naiintindihan sila or mas familiar sila or better known than the words they stand for. Diba when we say the word facts, DVD, PDF, URL, HTML, CD-ROM, already understood na kung ano yung ibig sabihin natin. But for added information, I just like to give more examples ng mga exemptions to the rule natin. AID stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. ATM stands for Automated Teller Machine. Do not use ATM machine because it would be redundant. M stands for machine and do not add machine on the next word. We also have C for Celsius or Centigrade. Then we have CD-ROM stands for Compact Disc Read-Only Memory. DVD, Digital Ver Versatile Disc. E.g. Exemplegratia or for example, F for Fahrenheit, Fox for facsimile, HIV for human immunodeficiency virus, HTML, hypertext markup language. We have the IE for EDS or that is, number for number, P for page, para for paragraph, PIN for personal identification number. Do not use PIN number, the same case as ATM because it would be redundant. We also have PDF or the portable document format file type and the URL or the uniform resource locator. Those are the ones we had given. You see? And moving forward, what can we do if we are abbreviating countries? Say, for an instance, how will you abbreviate Philippines? Is it letter A, RP, letter B, PH, or letter C, PHL? Pakitingin lang or pakichallenge lang ang ating sarili. Nare-recall po ba natin kung ano yung tamang abbreviation sa Philippines? Pakitype ng inyong kasagutan. Here's the release. Spelled out country names in text. Abbreviate the country names in tables and lists. 
In certain technical applications, it may be advisable to use either the two-letter or three-letter standard abbreviations based on the English names of countries. Tingnan natin. Example, Philippines. Kapag daw po, okay, going back to the rule, two-letter or three-letter, it is advisable the standard abbreviation based on English names of the country. So, Philippines would be PHL, Germany would be GER, France would be FR, and Israel IS. So, either we abbreviate countries with two-letter or three-letter. So, the answer is, ito ang explanation. PH and PHL ang sabot dun sa Philippines because PHL and PH is the International Organization for Standardization Initials for the Philippines. Okay po, inuulit ko po, RP is not used anymore to avoid ambiguity because uh, Philippines is Philippines. But we seldom use Republic of the Philippines. DFA Department Order Number 16-10, dated October 20, 2010, directs all DFA offices, consulates, generals, general, and for permanent missions to use PHL or PH for the Philippines. So, hindi na po natin ginagamit ang RP. At bilang pagpapatuloy, so ito po ay isa sa mga uh, nakalilitong bahagi ng DepEd Manual of Style because it's been used throughout when we address people, when we address, um, not, uh, what do you call to that, educational qualifications, degrees, and so on. So paano po ba tayo sumusulat ng educational degree to be specific? Ginawa ko pong example yung sarili ko. Which of the following is incorrectly written? I'll give you the chance to scrutinize. Medyo tatagalan po natin dito ang pagkaprocess ng question. A. Jennifer M. O. S. Star, comma, PH, period, D. Period. Letter B. Jennifer M. O. S. Star, PH, D. Capitalize po ba? Ah, hindi pa. Letter C, Jennifer M. O. Star, comma, all caps, PHD. Letter D, Jennifer M. O. Star, comma, PHD, period. Letter E, Dr. Jennifer M. O. Star, comma, PHD. Letter F, Jennifer M. O. Star, comma, PHD. Do you have any idea? Or should I give first the rulings? Use the abbreviated form of degrees after a person's name without periods. So, alin po dyan ang cross out na agad? Following this reminder. Next. In text, use the standard rule for abbreviations. I will give an example. R. Santos EDD PhD. So, sa case po nito... Si R. Santos ay double doctorate. Right? So, pag double doctorate po, or dual, may eligibility siya, for example, SESO, and a doctorate, what shall we do? So, first degree niya po, or sa kanyang eligibility, after the surname, wala po munang coma. That's the rule. Tapos magkukoma tayo para ilagay either yung kanyang second doctorate o yung kanyang eligibility. Halimbawa po ay seso siya. So, for example, pagka natin dito, R. Santos EDD, comma, seso 5. Wala pong coma after the surname. Tingnan naman po natin sa case ni Jennifer M. O. S. Star. Why this one is wrong? Kasi, wala po siyang koma. Dapat may koma. Why letter C is wrong as well? Dahil ang Doctor of Philosophy ay hindi all capitalized. 
bakit itong letter A ay mali? Of course, obviously, hindi po natin nilalagyan ng period ang PhD. Also, uh, as I remember, hindi rin po nilalagyan ng period sa Chicago Manual of Style as well as the American Psychological Association. I'm 100% uh, sure of that po. Kababasa ko lang siya sa uh, pag edit ko ng manuscripts using American Psychological Association formatting. Tingnan natin itong isa. Jennifer M. O. Star, comma, PhD period. Of course, mali rin po siya tulad ng case ni letter A. Okay. Bakit hindi mali si letter E and si letter F? Di ba meron tayong guidelines dun sa DepEd Manual of Style? Pag doctor ka daw, nilagay mo, mamimili ka lang. Either ilagay mo ay si doctor, DR, period, or si comma, PhD. Bakit si letter E sa case ni Jennifer M. O. Star ay hindi mali? I had uh, research references to back up this uh, answer na sa case ni Jennifer M. O. Star, hindi siya mali. Bakit po? Okay, first, you consider this fact. Ilan ang educational degree ni Jennifer M. O. Star? Okay, na napaprocess na po ba natin? In this example po, Kung si Jennifer M. O. Star ay isa lang ang doctorate, for example, Doctor of Philosophy in Development Education, magiging mali po si letter E. Bakit po? Because following the rulings, hindi tayo nagiging redundant sa educational qualification. Either mag-decide ka kung doctor ang inalagay mo, or PhD, or EDD, o DEM, o kung anumang degree niya. Dito naman po sa case ni Jennifer M. O. Star. Jennifer M. O. Star is a holder of two doctorate qualification. Doctor of Philosophy in Development Education and Doctor of Philosophy in English. Kaya po, uh, pwede siyang maging exemption to the rulings dahil Since siya ay double PhD, hindi naman po natin um, magandang tingnan na siya ay PhD, PhD. So, in that case, one of her PhD is written as DR and the other is written as PhD. So, that's another exemption to the rule. And in this case naman, given the fact na halimbawa si Dr. Oestar ay isa lang ang doctorate, letter F is also correct. Kasi nag-decide na siya kung ano yung ilalagay on uh, her name. So yan lamang po ay ilan sa mga cases ng kalituhan when we are writing our educational degree as well as our eligibility. And paano naman sa footnotes? Is it legit or scam? Use the abbreviated form of a term in footnote previously defined in the text. If a term is abbreviated for the first time in a footnote, do not spell out and do not provide the abbreviation in parentheses. Use the abbreviated form thereafter in both footnotes and text. Pasensya na po, parang tumitigas at lumalambot na ang dila ko because my Waterloo is uh, speaking bilingual. Medyo nahirapan po kung mag- uh, full Tagalog or mag-pronounce ng uh, combination ng Tagalog and English. I do not know why. So, yun na po. Fact or, uh, legit or scam? Answer is scam. Following uh, my example here, which I lifted from, dikimaobooks.com Okay, for the regular entries, for the first use, you have to spell out the footnotes. To parang tulad din, din po siya ng abbreviation and acronym. Spell out on the first use and on the next use or next citation or next mention, you can uh, already put 
the shortened version. So, scam siya kasi he do not spell it out. The first time in a footnote, do not spell it out. Scam po. Kasi dapat you spell it out. Same rulings nga po ng acronymy and abbreviation. Ayan. Next, governments. Which of the following is correct usage of naming national governments? Mabilisan? What's your answer? Spell out the names of national governments. So the answer is Government of the Philippines. Okay, yun po yung sagot in the GOP, GOP, GOPH, that's Government of the Philippines. Headings and titles, inulit lang po ito, pero we focus on headings and titles. Which of the following is properly abbreviated? A. Rep. Rep. Jose Cruz Jr. B. Representative Cruz. C. Representative Jose Cruz Jr. D. Senator Maria Santos. E. Senator Santos. And F. Sen Santos. Abbreviating titles before names. That's the rulings. Abbreviate civil or military titles preceding a full name. Civil or military titles preceding a full name. Tingnan natin, alin dito ang may full name? Spell out these titles if preceding a surname alone. Surname lang. Spell out natin. O, oh, nakikita niyo na po. And in salutations, abbreviated form is allowed. In salutations of a letter or a formal uh, document. Okay, the correct one is abbreviate kapag full name. So in this case, Jose Cruz is a full name, kaya abbreviated yung rep niya. And also, Maria Santos is a full name, kaya siya ay abbreviated. Okay? Tama po. And ito, correct din naman siya, but then, um, ito po ay spell out if proceeding a surname alone. So ito po ay tama rin, kaya lang ay, ang tinatanong naman ay, abbreviation. So, correct itong representative Cruz, Senator Santos. Ito ay wrong kung hindi ito a salutation. Next, headings and titles. Which of the following is the proper abbreviation of a social title? Parang kanina din ito na rulings. Tingnan natin kung uh, natandaan po natin. Abbreviate social titles whether preceding the full name or The surname, do not abbreviate in direct address. Alin po bang direct address? Examples natin. Direct address itong, see you later, doctor. So, tingnan ang correct. This one is properly abbreviated. Dr. Fanny F. Carandang. Dr. Carandang, Mrs. Andal, Mrs. Belen Andal, see you later, doctor. Social title po siya. And also, katulad din ito ng uh, yung salutation following. Pwede tayo mag-abbreviate kapag salutation. In this case po, hindi daw po dapat ina-abbreviate kapag direct address. Paano malalaman na direct address? Mayroon siyang apos uh, Trophy. Uh, apostrophe ba? Quotation mark. Yun. May quotation mark po siya. Headings and titles. Which of the following is the wrong usage of academic degree and professional designation? Tingnan natin. Katulad din to ng case nung diniscuss natin in detail a while ago. Omit these titles when an academic degree or professional designation follows a name. Okay, wrong usage. Dr. Dante Diamante. MD. So, do not make this one doctor and MD at the same time because it's redundant if isa lang yung kanyang degree. Same ang tinutukoy dito. Dr. Liza Villamator EDD. So, mali din po kasi redundancy. So, yun. Those are the wrong usage. And this one, A and D are both correct. Which of the following has correct form? 
Reverend Ray Reyes, the Reverend Ray Reyes, the Rev Ray Reyes, on for Honorable, Honorable Mary Season, the Honorable Mary Season, or the Honorable Mary Season. Tingnan natin, Reverend and Honorable. Use Rev, the abbreviated form, and Honorable, abbreviated form before a full name. So which one is having a full name? Kindly analyze. Then when the does not precede the title. There's a the. Paano daw po i-pronounce ang the? The for consonant ang sinusundan. And the for vowel ang sinusundan na word. Spell out the titles when used with the. Paano siya? Reverend Ray Reyes. The Reverend Ray Reyes, Honorable Mary Season, and the Honorable Mary Season. So, if a full pala natin kapag meron siyang uh, article na da. Ayan. That's the rulings. So, which one is correct? Letter B is correct. Letter D is correct. Letter E is correct. So, alin pa? This one is wrong kasi dapat ito'y naka-full. Ito naman ay wrong din da kasi dahil ito'y dapat naka-full din. Next. When will you use issuances option A and option B? Parang katulad din ito nung kanina. Mga depth and rulings on how to uh, mention documents, Republic Acts, mga legal issuances, debt and orders. So, tingnan natin. When will you use issuances option A and option B? Magmuni-muni po tayo. Okay. Republic Act number 10533, comma, series of 2013, spelled out siya. And in letter B, RA10533, comma, uh, series dot 2013. Issuances are spelled out at first mention and are abbreviated thereafter. Republic Act, Administrative Order, Executive Order, and other legislations should be abbreviated as RA, AO, EL, respectively. And others, without periods in between letters, the year series should be included. At first mention, at succeeding citation, para din po tayo nagtitesis, di ba? Uh, we spell out the names of the authors on first mention, then on the second citation, et al. Pero sa Deped Manual of Style, yeah, same din. But, Going back again dun sa, ang gulo kong kausap, ano? Going back again dun sa, ano nga ba yun? Doon sa ating thesis, ngayon kasi, ang 7th edition, kahit first mention na, pwede na gamitin ang et al. So that's included in that ed manual. Uh, yung ating APA naman. Uh, if you want to learn more about APA, I have also a separate discussion for that and also uploaded dito sa aking uh, channel yun. So, ito na siya. Deped Order Number 8, Series of 2013, Succeeding Citation, DO8, Series of 2013. Paikliin na natin on second mention or citation. Kaya, ang sagot, Letter A is for the first mention and letter B is succeeding citation. Non-English terms, paano po pag ganito ang KWF ay, anong KWF nga ba? Blank ng wikang Filipino. Commission ba siya or kagawaran? I am not familiar. So it's for you to find out. Is the English translation of the non-English term properly abbreviated? Tingnan? Ang answer daw ay yes. Commission. Ano ba ang commission? Ah, oh yeah. Commission ng wikang Filipino. So, Commission on Filipino Language. At 
first appearance, spell out first the English translation of abbreviated non-English term followed by the non-English abbreviation in parentheses. So, maglalagay lang tayo ng parentheses doon sa kanyang non-English abbreviation kung may equivalent siya katulad ng Commission in Filipino Language. Gawin yung English na yon, tapos kulungin ang KWF. Yun yung non-English term. Plurals, medyo mahaba na yung discussion natin. That's why I decided na putol-putol yung aking uh, lesson or yung discussion ko kasi Rules 1 to 96 yung una kong ipipicture. Which of the following is the proper way to pluralize abbreviation? Paano naman tayo magpupluralize ng abbreviation and acronyms? Example ko dito, daily lesson logs. Napakadaming daily lesson logs ang isinasabit ng mga guro. So, ipluralize natin. ADLL with apostrophe S, BDLLs, CDLLs, DDLLs, apostrophe. Add lowercase s to indicate plural abbreviation. Do not place an apostrophe before the s. Which one is correct? Example, school disaster risk reduction and management plans. So, add lowercase s. Maliit na s at huwag lalagyan ng apostrophe. The correct one is letter C, D, L, L. Ganyan daw po mag-pluralize ng abbreviation and acronym. Possessive, naku, nakareveal na pala ang sagot. Mali yung animation kong na-i-order or na-i-sequence. Na Which of the following is the proper way to indicate the possessive form of an abbreviation or acronym? Department of Health's Programs, Department of Health Programs, Department of Health Programs. Pag ganito daw po ang forma ng ating, uh, alimbawa ay possessive form of an abbreviation or acronym, letter C ang sagot, danga na lang at nai-reveal na. The ruling is, add an apostrophe before the S to indicate a possessive form. Do not add apostrophe S to the abbreviation or acronyms. Kaya po, ang mangyayari, maglalagay tayo ng apostrophe S kapag spelled out ang ating acronym. Tapos, kukulungin mo siya sa parenthesis doon sa kanyang DOH, na example di yan, at wala na pong uh, pluralization. Pinilagay mo na yung pluralization dun sa spelled out na Department of Health program. Example pa rin, Department of Education's Debt Ed Policies. Punctuation, which of these need a period? PhD, MA, USA, Debt Ed, NEDA. Omit a period when abbreviating educational degrees, names of countries, and other geographic locations, government, ministries, and agencies, institutions, or organizations. The one I'm talking about, pero kanina, educational degree lang yung na-mention ko. So, PhD, MA, wala po. And educational or geographical, USA. Ministries, agencies, institutions, organizations. So, normally, pag naggagawa na tayo ng mga ganito, hindi na tayo mahilig magtutuldo. And it's Right? Ang sagot po, I wish of this need a period none. Kasi nga po may ruling tayo, we have to omit the period now when we abbreviate. Let's have the next. Tables naman. Medyo lumalalim ang ating discussion. Which of the following is not a step in presenting tables in depth and manual of style? Kasi kalimitan ito rin yung kalituhan ng mga kasamahan natin, ng kaguruan. And even uh, those with uh, in the higher ups, paano ba tayo nagtitable? Specifically, when you prepare documents sa kailangan ng data. Okay, yan yung example. Ito yung family Ann. Tingnan nyo kung alin ang tama. Magmuni-muni. Letter A, please entries alphabetically. B, define any abbreviation used in tables. C, place the definitions above the table. D, left align text in first column. And E, right align all numbers. Not a step. Anong dito ang mali sa mga step? Ito yung example. Follow natin yung uh, example. 
Please entries alphabetically. Alphabetically po ba ito? Tingnan. Define abbreviation used in the table. Meron siya. Place definitions above the table. Above po ba? Left align text in first column. Right align. So, na-reveal na natin yung answer. Bakit daw po mali? Place the definitions. Anong sagot? Below. Below the table. Ito yun, below the table. So, tama po pala na left align text in first column. Ito siya, left align. Right align numbers. Ito yung matagal po nang sinasabi pag nag edit po ako ng manuscript. Kasi yung mga ed, uh, birth papers at saka yung mga papers for publication under DepEd, specifically when I edit Quest Journal, ito yung mga kalimitan na errors ng mga uh, researchers. Kasi uh, dito, pag text kasi, yan, left align. Kalimitan yung ginagawa nila, naka-center. Tapos pag number naman, naka-center din para daw po magandang tingnan, balanse. Pero ang totoong buhay niyan, right align pag number, left align kapag uh, sa first column na ito ay text. Tapos dapat naglalagay tayo ng uh, definition below the table. Kalimitan kasi rulings ito, uh, hindi natin spell out ang mga ano man tawag din, mga abbreviation and uh, mga acronyms sa table. Katulad niyan, nilagay natin, alphabetical siya. So, ayan. In-spell out natin ano ba yung tinutukoy doon. So, hopefully, this uh, series of discussion had given you at least uh, minimal learnings Uh, I am not sure kung nakapagbigay ba ako but at least I believe minimal sana or more of the realizations ng mga common mistakes natin when we edit or when we prepare documents in the Department of Education. At uh, panandalian ko munang pinuputol ang discussion ko po. On my next video, I will be discussing something on Uh, Deped Manual of Style, capitalization naman po. Until I come up with uh, all the rulings in Deped Manual of Style kasi masyadong may kahabaan yung mga rulings if you would go back with uh, Deped Order number 30 series of 2019. And it's also reiterated, katulad ng nami-mention ko, na dapat po uh, as part of our unification in document preparation, Pagre-ready na rin po sa ating 1DEP and 1QMS, dapat po ay tulad-tulad um, ang format ng mga documents ng mga schools. Kung may district level, dapat tulad din. Kung may, uh, yes, division level, regional level, and even center, uh, central office. So, yan po ay dapat tulad-tulad. Kahit sa ang division ka mapunta, hindi ka mag-worry na yung mga template na na-prepare mo or yung documents na nasa, nakasanayan mo would be different from theirs kasi mag-unify na po tayo ng mga forms at mga, uh, yun na nga, formatting and styles when we prepare documents. Hopefully po, once again, nakapagbahagi ako sa inyo and I will be giving more of my discussion. Medyo putol-putol lang po kasi napakahaba talaga if we have to include that in one discussion lang. With that po, thank you so much po and see you on my next discussion.